Hello everybody and welcome to part two of this series. In this video, we're going to go ahead and set up an IDE, an integrated development environment, which is gonna make our life when it comes to coding with Blender so much easier than the built-in text editor. Now, this particular video is for the Mac OS setup. So if you are running Windows or Linux, then check out the description below for links to those particular setup videos so you don't have to guess what you're going to have to do. You can follow along exactly in those individual videos. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now Blender comes with a built-in text editor and we can see that in a couple of ways. We can change a workspace to the text editor itself or use Shift F11. So if I do that now, we get ourselves the text editor open up or we can go across, let me just set that back to the 3D viewport. We can go across to the scripting workspace that we already have. And when I first started working with scripts in Blender, I did everything exclusively in this text editor. However, as I've developed, I've realized the power of using an IDE complementing Blender really does accelerate your workflow. So we'll be spending a lot of time in the text editor, having a look over here on the left-hand side of the Python stuff that actually goes on in the background and using that to develop our scripts and eventually our add-ons as well. I'm going to assume that you guys don't have everything installed and ready to go, apart from Blender, of course. So we're gonna start with the basics and that's going to be installing VS Code. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so in front of us here, we have a blank installation of Mac OS. Now, in order to get everything up and running, we're going to go through every bit step by step. Now, VS Code can be a little bit more finickety when it comes to the Mac operating system. We cannot use the um, Python that's installed with it. So we're going to have to do a couple of different steps than we would have to do on other operating systems. Now, all of this is detailed within the Visual Studio uh, documents themselves when it comes to installing them, but I will just run through it with you anyway. So that is downloading at the moment. The other thing that we're gonna to have to do is install Python. Now, in order to get it to work in the way that we need it to work, we're going to install it through Brew. And this being a brand new installation, we're not gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna to go to the uh, address bar at the top here, um, delete everything that's in there, and we're going to go to brew.sh. Now I'll go to the appropriate site. And what we will need to do is paste this into our terminal. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's copy this bit of code. Of course, look it up. If you don't trust this bit of code, you shouldn't run it. If you feel safe, then of course, we can go and launch ourselves a terminal and paste that in. Now, if you don't or can't see this very well, remember you can hold down, um, I believe it's control and plus, command and plus, there we go. We can make the console bigger so we can see it a bit more easily. So I'm gonna let that run. That's fine, press return, type in our password, and then we're going to have to wait a few minutes. Now, this can be up to 10 minutes um, on my particular computer. Yours may be quicker or slower, depends on your internet connection and your computer speed. So we're gonna let this run through. And in fact, whilst that's downloading at the moment, VS Code has successfully downloaded, but I don't want to leave it where it is. I want to go into Finder go to my downloads and I'm going to click and drag it from the downloads folder into my applications folder and it's out of the way and we might as well get that launched as well so I'm going to launch it from the launch pad in this case you could launch it from a search bar or indeed add a shortcut if you wanted to visual studio code is an app downloaded from the internet well we're going to open it because we trust it Okay, so with Visual Studio Code open, I'm gonna press Command and the plus key a couple of times to make it nice and large. I'm gonna double click on the header bar at the top. There we go, so it's filling up our screen. And then I'm just gonna have a quick look at Terminal to see how everything's going here. It's still downloading stuff. This, as I said, can take up to 10 minutes. So whilst that's going, let's sort out um, Visual Studio Code here. I'm gonna to go to the sidebar here and click on Extensions, and I'm gonna search for, or I don't have to search here, Python is at the top. If we click on it, it looks like this, lots of downloads. We're gonna go ahead and install that. And each time you install something like this, it can take a few moments for VS Code to catch up. And in some cases, it's even better if you just shut VS Code down, fully by going to code at the top left and quit Visual Studio Code. We don't wanna do it at the moment though, it's installing, but after we've installed everything, that can help solve a few bugs or at least give it a kick up the backside to actually get working with its extensions installed. 
as well as this extension we're also going to install a blender extension so we're going to go ahead type in blender and click on install under blender development but we're going to go ahead and install that and that'll help us out later on when it comes to the actual blender development we can hop straight in hey look i've just increased the download count we can hop straight into blender and run it straight from here now there's going to be a few issues here the mac os system installer of python is not recommended that's why we're doing this thing down here with the terminal and it's still downloading at the moment so we're going to have to leave that there i'm just going to dismiss that for the moment and we'll be able to sort it out in a bit okay so let's get rid of that we're ready to go let's set up a working folder so i'm going to click the two files which is the explorer i'm going to go to open folder now you can open any folder that you like, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call it test. And inside that test folder, once we've opened it, you'll see the whole of VS Code will refresh and now we're working within that folder. We can create new folders, we can refresh it. Um, if you link it, you can also end up um, tracking your changes, which is really useful. I'm going to click the plus button here on a new file or to create a new file. I'm going to call it test and I'm going to go .py. We can see that the icon has changed on the side and when we go ahead and start that we may get here we go you can change the interpreter we've got that okay and then it comes up with a load of other options we're just going to keep dismissing these for the moment we will sort them out once we've got python installed and it's still downloading at the moment in the background once we've got everything sorted, we're able to start auto-completing really quickly. With the tab key, we can complete um, things. In this case, we're able to start importing a math library. This is a library within Python. Python standard libraries, by the way, are linked in the description below. And from this, we can do something like pi, so math, and we need to access that library. So we're gonna use a dot, and we can see all of the other things here that we can use, and math.py is one of those. This is obviously going to be the number pi, and we can print this to the console using print, open brackets, and then close brackets or parentheses at the end. So we're passing math.py into the print function. Now if we press play here, a terminal should open up and all being well, it will print out the number pi. Now we've managed to get to a point here where in the background we've managed to install some of the things that we need in order for this to work. However, when it comes to Blender, we're going to need to import the Blender Python library. So we type in import autocomplete. This is one of the benefits of using VS Code rather than using the text editor over in uh, Blender. And let's type in uh, import BPY, the Blender Python library or BPy. Oh, and it's auto completed there. Do watch out for that BPY. I'm gonna press space and come back again. Okay, so now in order to access parts of this library, unfortunately we cannot go bpy dot. It doesn't know any of the autocompletes. So we're gonna to have to install something else. But before we go and do that, let's go and check on what we have in our terminal. Oh, it's actually finished. That is great. So that was nice and quick and well-timed. So I'm gonna close the terminal down and I'm gonna save my Python file and then I'm just going to restart code. So I'm going to quit Visual Studio Code and I'm going to relaunch it again. Then in the terminal down here, we are going to type in brew install Python 3 on the end. And I'm going to dismiss these on the side here. And this will take, once again, a few moments to do. And in fact, in the lower left, we can see that it's using the system Python at the moment. It's warned us about this. So we will change our interpreter in a bit. But down in the left-hand side, I've just clocked it with my eye. We're using Python 2.7. We don't want to use Python 2.7. We want to use the version we've just installed. Now that we've done that, we're just going to do one other thing. We're going to try pip. So if we type in pip3... Excellent. So we know that that is working. So we're going to go pip3 install pip dash dash upgrade dash dash user. Oh, make sure you don't put a space in like I just did. This will update the Python installer or Python package installer to the latest version. Okay, so we have pip version 20 installed. I'm not sure what version Python we have installed. You can check that by typing in Python 3 dash dash version 
So we're running 3.77, even though that's not the latest, that's absolutely fine for what we are going to be doing. So we won't be updating that at this point in time. Now that's all installed, I'm just going to quit code and open it up again. Excellent. Now, let's go ahead, Command and Shift and P, and let's go and select our interpreter. Now, if you don't see this at the top here, this is because I've recently used it, we can go Python colon select and it will be on the list. Of course, for me, it's right at the top here. Now we've restarted, we've got a series of options. In this particular case, I'm gonna select this second one down here, 3.77, and we can confirm that down in the lower left. You may have noticed before that it said 2.7. Now that we've got that installed, we should be able to go to the linter. PyLint is not installed. Well, let's just see if it will work now. So we click install and it will go through and sort itself out. Now we've also got another warning up here, which we can just get rid of. We have just sorted that out. We will get warnings here that the script isn't installed to the path. That's not gonna affect what we are currently working on. So we're going to ignore that for the moment. And the final thing we've got to do here is we've got BPY dot, we don't have this auto completing yet. And until this is auto completing, even though we've got the benefits of the rest of VS code and managing our code and syntax highlighting and auto complete when it comes to the standard Python library, we need to make sure that we can do it with the Blender library as well. So let's go back down to our terminal. If you don't have your terminal open, if it's actually closed, you can go to the top here and go new terminal. In fact, that will clear everything down, which is nice. And we have to type in here pip3 install fake dash bpy dash module dash 2.82. And this could be found on GitHub as well. Link in the description so you can read all about it. And then we're going to go dash dash user and give it a few moments to do. Boom, we have now got autocomplete for the Blender library. Let's just focus on that for a moment up here. So I'm gonna restart typing. It might not click in straight away, but let's go BPY. Oh, this looks good. Dot, is it auto-completing just yet? If you find it's not auto-completing, you can take a few moments or you can restart VS Code. It looks like it's not going to play ball at the moment. So let's go ahead and restart Visual Studio Code. Make sure you quit it properly from the menu up there. Excellent, we're back. Let's go ahead, just delete that line of code. Yes, we've got it. Let's get rid of that message. So if we now go BPY dot, there we go. It's starting to give us suggestions, which is perfect, dot ops dot. Oh, what else do we have in here? Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find mesh. So M-E-S, there we go, dot. We get a big long list here. Now I'm gonna shorten it by going primitive and add Suzanne. So this bit of code here will add Suzanne the monkey to our blend file. It'll be straight in the middle of the scene with the default settings. Let's delete the rest of this, save our file and go and have a look at how it behaves over in Blender. Okay, so once again, over in Blender, we're going to go to our scripting workspace. I'm gonna use the mouse wheel here to scroll along the top, scripting. And we can go ahead and open up our code here. So I'm going to go open. And by the way, I'm no longer on the virtual machine that I installed it on. I am in my proper Mac in this case, because Blender doesn't run in my virtual machine at the moment. Okay, so here's our code all imported. What happens if we delete our cube? Wahaha. And then we just need to run our script. So in order to do that, you can either scroll along here and click on run script, or you can go ahead and press Alt and P and that will run it. And look at that, Suzanne has appeared in our scene. And if we repeatedly do that, we will get multiple Suzannes in our scene so we can take over the world. <laughs> so that's brilliant. That's our first script done in Blender essentially. Now, before we finish off, there are a couple of things that I want to show you because they are gotchas. They're very easy to miss out on. Now, let's say we wanted to make a comment here to make comments in Python, you use a hash. So I'm gonna say, this is my first script. Now, this will not update over in VS Code. If we go back to VS Code, we will see that that's not there. In order to get it over to VS Code, we're going to have to save it. You can do that under the, oh, we're not quite there at the top here. Let's scroll along. Under the text menu, we can save. 
and going ahead and saving, we can see the shortcut key there is Alt and S. If we go ahead now and look at VS Code, we can see it's there. And just the same, if we change something over here, it won't automatically update back over in Blender. We'd have to make sure we saved our work, this time with Command and S, so there's a slight difference on both sides. And you will see here that we get this red button appear on the header bar. If we click on that, we can see that it's changed. Blender has recognized that the file has changed and we want to reload it from disk. And there we go, we get our changes coming across. Fantastic. Well, well done for getting this far. It is a big step to be able to start coding in Blender. If you're brand new to this, congratulations. If this is a refresher for you, brilliant. If you've got any comments, of course, pop them down below. And of course, if you've liked the video, hit like. If you want to see the next ones in the series, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.